Watch out out the hurricane here in Duckbird. Race cars, lasers, airplanes, it's all duck blur. Might solve a mystery or rewrite history. DuckTales, woo! Every day they're out there making DuckTales, woo! Tales are daring, do bad, and good luck, Tales. The, the, the danger, watch behind you. There's a stranger out to find you. What to do, just grab onto some DuckTales, woo! Every day they're out there making DuckTales, woo! Tales are daring, do bad, and good luck, Tales, woo! Not ponytails or captain tails, no duck tails, woo! Eh. Yeah. <laughs> duck tails. Now, this is the original series that came out in 1987 when it first aired in syndication back when I was only two years old. It aired on Fox 11, KTTV Los Angeles. And it used to come on every weekday at 4 o'clock. That's right. <laughs> and this is the DVD release I picked up back in 2005. I have all three volumes. Dizzy has yet to release the fourth one, and I hope they do. And since they now have their Disney Movie Club exclusives and all this other stuff, and I know they're actually bringing back all the classics on DVD. Uh, once again, just for a continuation, because I know they started putting them out since the 2000s. Yeah, because we need more. We really do. <laughs> and I always love watching the show as well. <laughs> just, to, just to show you exactly what they look like. So, <laughs> but what can I say? DuckTales was an original classic, especially when it first premiered on September 21st, 1987. And it's going to be celebrating its 30th anniversary since its release. Yep, it had Alan Young, who also did the voice of Scrooge in Mickey's Christmas Carol that came out in 1983 so interesting enough he's, he was going to provide the voice of Scrooge McDuck that along with Rusty Taylor doing the voices of the nephews and Webby Webb and Gale and they also had other voice actors like Peter Cullen they also got uh, Tony Asemo does the voice of Donald Duck as well as June Fourway, Joan Gerber, Hamilton Camp, Brian Cummings, Don Messick, Terrence McGovern, Hal Smith, Casey Kasem also joins in. I mean, look at all these voice actors that they got. The animation was superb. It looks amazing. It, it actually captures the spirit of what the comics were, even though they started to make a major change from it. In fact, I think it was more closer to the um, the Don Rosa ones that they had in the 80s, which in turn was also closer to the Carl Barks comics. And basically, it also plays more like an inspiration to Indiana Jones, in a way, because, I mean, yeah, if you look at the font of DuckTales, it does have an inspiration of Indiana Jones fonts. So, because, you know, Indiana Jones is a professor, an archaeologist, while Scrooge McDuck is considered to be one of the richest ducks in Duckburg, yet alone the richest duck in the world. He does explore a lot of adventures, bringing in his nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, which are all Donald's nephews, which, of course, uh, Scrooge is also uh, the nephew of Donald. There's a lot of families, relatives involved. I mean, you get Duckworth joining in as Scrooge's butler. 
Mrs. Beakley as uh, Scrooge's maid. She has a daughter, you know, Rebby, as I mentioned already. Gyro Gyrulus, the gadget man. Then uh, there's Launchpad McQuack, the, <laughs> the dim-witted uh, pilot. And of course, Doofus, who are Huey, Dewey, and Louie's uh, woodchuck's mate and best friend, along with Launchpad McQuack. And then, of course, there's the, the nemesis, Flintheart Glumgold, Scrooge's nemesis. And then we get a sorceress named Magic of Dispel. We get the Beagle Boys, yeah, the biggest crooks of Duckburg, uh, along with Mob Beagle joining in. Sometimes there's even Beagle Babes and all of that. Yep, <laughs> this is one of the... They always explore a lot of bigger adventures. So heading on their way, like they're trying to find the lost city of Atlantis, the the lost harp, and every other place around the world, you know, trying to search for gold, even the golden fleece, or even the, the discovery of dinosaurs and, and cavemen and all of that. That's right. <laughs> it, it really was a great series, and I watched this every day. When it was on, they used to come on, um, I believe, like before uh, Double Dare. Because I know Double Dare was on Nickelodeon. But Double Dare started to have a deal with uh, with Nickelodeon and Fox. So they, now they get to play all their episodes every day. You know, every weekday afternoons. After you get out of school. Yeah. <laughs> well... It was a fun show. I mean, they they had comics, too, that inspires by it. I mean, yeah, there's even more of the comic strips that they were bringing in while the show continued to go on. It became so popular that they started getting all these merchandising from the show. And they also had the video games from DuckTales, too. I mean, there's even the video game for the Game Boy, the NES. Yeah, I used to have the NES game. I wish I did. But it got lost somewhere. I mean, now that I got my NES back. It was also enough to bring us a full-length movie that came out in 1990 called uh, DuckTales the Movie, Treasures of the Lost Lamp. And yes, I do have a copy of the film. I actually recorded it on KKL9 back in 1997. And I did actually find an HD print of the film. But I would have loved to get it on DVD, you know, you know, just to a certain extent to see how good the transfer looks. But I hope it does get a Blu-ray release someday from Disney, so maybe I'll take a chance at it. And I know there was going to be uh, more after that, but even though it did make its budget, it did. It was going to be part of the uh, Disney Movie Tunes banner. It wasn't as highly successful as it turned out, so they apparently they put it on halt. They never got made and never got released at all, so that's a shame. Because I would have loved to see the continuing adventures of of Scrooge McDuck and his game, heading out for more adventures. Yeah. And I know in in the later seasons they started bringing in Gizmo Duck, which is our friend in Crackshell. Yep. And then they also have uh, Bubba, the cave duck, and so on. <laughs> yeah. And I love the music that they chose. I mean, the, the score was actually done by Ron Jones, uh, along with Thomas Chase Jones, and Steve uh, Zuckerman. Also, the theme song was written by Mark Muller, with Jeff Pasito singing the song. Did a great job. Which he also went on to, to sing the song for Darkwing Duck, which is pretty much a spin off to uh, DuckTales. I mean, you got Launchpad McCrack and Gizmo Duck joining in. But it's sort of like an inspiration to uh, The Shadow and Batman and all these other ones. Yeah. Well, anyway, I know I, I kept talking more about this, but, it, but I just want to get to. My reaction to the new 
2017 reboot of DuckTales, which is now going to be premiering on Disney XD, which it just premiered already, August 12th of 2017. And I just finished watching the first episode, which is available on YouTube, on their Disney XD YouTube channel. And whatever I think about it, I would say I like it. This is only the first episode. I liked it, but they're basically going for the, uh, the comic book style to it as you could tell. The animation basically looks quite different from the animation that you saw in both the comics and the the animated series of 1987. Because the animated series uh, was actually well done. They really uh, were done and hand drawn and they actually worked together with Tokyo Movie Shinsha uh, along with Wayne and, and Burbank Studios uh, to provide the animation and the movements for the TV series. But the animation that was done um, for the 2017 reboot, it looked like they'd done this, um, they did it with a pretty standard uh, computer animation, but using some 2D art and, and try to create that particular style that almost resembles to the comic books. Only the characters look quite different, especially Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby. Yeah, <laughs> because you notice how uh, how the characters look more like marshmallow heads and um, with all feathers. Almost starting to look a little bit like uh, Howard the Duck right there, actually. <laughs> because, it, it, yeah, the 1986 movie I'm talking about, the one that started... Even that looked like a marshmallow head, too. So it kind of resembles that. And Scrooge McDuck, of course, has uh, a red coat, just like in the comics, because I know in, in the 1987 series, it's all blue. So they did a major change for that. And and they got all the other characters. They all look quite different too. Once again, yeah, including Launchpad McQuack, uh, Mrs. Beakley, and uh, even Donald Duck looked quite different too. And even his yeah, even um, even when he became a sailor later on, uh, he now has uh, a black coat instead of a. Um, a blue coat, but they're going for a different look. So now I'm going to review the 2017 reboot series, which just started its first season of 21 half-hour episodes, which is going to be premiering on Disney XD on September 23rd of this year. So I can't wait to see that. Even though I don't have cable and satellite, I did have satellite when I was living at my old place. I had Direct TV the whole time. And I wish I had back again, but sadly, you know, I'm having some issues with this apartment. So it also includes the, the hour-long episode, which I'm going to review right now. And it just got revived for the second season, so I can't wait to see how that turns. And on top of that, it also had been announced that they're going to add, you guessed it, the crime-fighting superhero, Darkwing Duck. Let's get dangerous. Can't wait to see that. <laughs> They're also going to bring in Gizmo Duck and the rest of the characters. So I can't wait for that. <laughs> so let's continue. Stars David Tennant, who was from the 2005 revival series Doctor Who, also the 2013 series as well which is based on the original series from the 60s in the UK, you know, one of the longest running series. I saw like um, a little bit of the original series when it aired on PBS a long time ago, but seeing that I was born in 85, I might have probably seen it, or maybe not, so I'm not so sure. 
But I have seen the Sci-Fi Channel version, which is the 2005 revival. Didn't watch it that much, but I have seen it. But he's going to do the voice of Scrooge McDuck in this version. Sort of a dead ringer to Alan Young, which he just recently passed away last year. And I know it's sad, but at least um, he'll do alright. Danny Pudi as Huey. Ben Schwartz as Dewey, Bobby Monahan as Louie, Kate Machucci as Webby Bendercrack, and Kate Machucci had been several shows and movies as I could think of, so I knew who that actress is, so she's cute. Beck Bennett, Tox Alagondoy as Mrs. Beakley, and Tolly Anselmo as Donald Duck. Yeah, based on the Uncle Scrooge comics by Carl Barks with Don Rosa joining in. And it's also based on the 1987 series by Jam Magon. And it's being developed by Matt Yumberg and Francisco Agones. It begins somewhere in Duckburg where Donald Duck is just getting ready for a job interview. While he's been overprotective as an uncle, taking care of three nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Yeah, they were just making him some breakfast and all that just to congratulate him on his new job. And he was ready to hire the new babysitter for them, but that didn't work out. So then he decided to hire his estranged uncle. Not to mention he's considered to be the richest duck in the world. Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge was just uh, in the middle of a business meeting with his clients and he just uh, got out of there with Launchpad McCrack um, as the driver, you know, just crashing into many places. You know, he, he's a pretty lousy driver as we know it. So then uh, Donald Duck had arrived uh, at his mansion just ready to drop the boys off with Scrooge. So Donald's on his way to his job, you know, just sending out his resume, even though he had trouble with the stapler. <laughs> uh, anyway, Scrooge McDuck was just too busy doing with all the finances and all his other businesses that he had to do while being distracted by the boys that suddenly uh, Scrooge decided to hire Mrs. Beakley to send him in their room with a bag of marbles and yeah, lock them up and they're just feeling completely bored <laughs> that suddenly Webby had came and captured them so they be begin to explain how Scrooge McDuck was once an adventurer and he actually worked together with Donald Duck so they went exploring inside um, Scrooge's garage where he had a lot of valuable things. There's even Armstrong the robot and all this other stuff. I can't believe I saw that. So it's like an Easter egg. And then um, they found a picture where it shows um, Donald Duck uh, working together with Scrooge McDuck uh, on a pirate ship as Rebby just showed to them that he was definitely the biggest, they were like the best team that they ever had exploring all all the adventures that they had. Yeah. Until um, one of the nephews had accidentally opened the treasure chest and it reveals a ghost pirate. Yeah. Scrooge was about to set off on a new adventure since he hasn't done one for 50 years. Mostly because his family was having a lot of troubles going around. He came to the rescue to save the nephews and Webby from the ghost pirate and just when he was about to ready to cut off his head just uses a statue of himself and stop him and then all of a sudden the statue of the golden dragon had 
I came to life and was after Scrooge. So that's when the, the nephews and Webby decided to save him with the help of Launchpad McQuack, you know, bringing in his plane, since he is a pilot, which the dragon suddenly went straight on top of the of Scrooge's money bin, and he actually dives all the way in, into the hole, almost into that classic moment that was also featured in the opening credits of, of the series, which was actually part of the episode Earthquack. Yeah, I remember that episode. Where he actually dives into the money bin like a swimming pool. He actually spits out all the gold coins. Classic moment. So they're being ready to set on a new journey to Atlantis. But meanwhile, Donald Duck is, has been hired for a new job. It turns out that he's actually working as a sailor for Scrooge's nemesis, Flint Hart Glumgold. Of Glumgold Industries. There you go. So now he's working with them with his game to to go after the jewel, the lost jewel of Atlantis, while Scrooge um, and his game are heading off by going on into the submarine and exploring. Once they got into Atlantis, um, that has a lot of traps. Uh, they're trying to find an easier way in until they finally found the jewel. Just as they want to find the jewel themselves. So There you go. <laughs> That's the episode called Woohoo. And I can't wait to see some more that follows afterwards, which is called Day Trip of Doom, The Great Dime Chase, and The Beagle Birthday Massacre. And all the others that's going to follow once it premieres on September 23rd of this year. Which is two days after its 30th anniversary of the original series. Yeah. Now, what do I think about the new series? I'm going to say this, um, since it's only the first episode. I can't wait for more of them. They were going for a quirky side of the series that they're trying to make it more modernized for this generation. I mean, granted, the 1987 series was already a modern series as it is, even though the series actually felt uh, as modern as it could be um, for the 80s. Because I I know Gizmo Duck was sort of an answer to Robocop and and all the other adventures that that took place but it still remains almost like like a whole different generation this one was going for a more modernized take that has a bit of a comic book feel to it it's quite decent even though it is very cheap and generic as some people might think but hey you know that's how reboots are becoming these days i mean they're just a quick cash in but it's definitely going to get a little better once we get to all the other episodes that follow. But since this is only the first episode, um, I'm going to try to state my um, claims on here. and Which is going to be personally my opinion. I wish they had gotten some better smart writers here. Like I wish they had like some heart and and soul that they went into because that's what made the original series uh, better was that it had a heart to it you care for the characters they, they do whatever they can to to do what's right I mean they make mistakes granted but no matter what there always will be a family here I just feel like you know they're just going for another particular storyline where the family themselves are, are going through a lot of troubles and it, and it just doesn't seem to work out and they're just going for a whole quirky edge type of feel to it just like all the other shows that we're getting and it just has your typical pop culture references of today's generation I mean yes they're even putting in some today's technology such as cell phones and all this other stuff 
and but at least they did manage to have um, some more adventures that's going to follow and since they went to the trip of of Atlantis I thought this was perfect at least they're getting to it yeah I have several nitpicks here was that particularly the nephews themselves Huey Dewey and Louie they just come across as just being you know your typical kids you know just being lazy bored dull they, see, they seem like they just never have all the fun they need and they're just going around criticizing what Scrooge McDuck has once they explored inside his garage and then they said that that all these valuables that he has were all fake and even the the photo between him and Scrooge McDuck on a pirate ship is it's just Photoshop yeah just I, I know they're just completely dumb at times I mean even worse I mean one of the nephews started to to make all these dumb mistakes by letting out that one dragon they even left the the house boat running and it actually explodes in that at the end of the the episode couldn't believe that and they're not exactly they're not exactly as smart as they as they could until they figured out uh, later on a uh, webby seems to be quite quirky yeah and she's she's also ready for a hamburger yeah they, they just keep coming up with all these uh all these uh, strange, quirky jokes in, in the series, and then you get Launchpad just being the a goofball. Yeah, mostly because he he doesn't talk much, but he's just going around doing what he can. <laughs> but then again, you know, Launchpad McQuack not only was he an awesome pilot, but because he, he does all these crashes. Yeah, if it got rains, I can crash it. <laughs> Love that line. But he was dim-witted. Um, in the original series too but still at least he does what he can do I mean because he's more of a daredevil anyway I mean he really is it was great to see Donald Duck um, back again and he's being voiced by Tony Elizambo and did a did a great job too so now you know that's Donald uh, Scrooge McDuck is definitely as smart as he could be. I mean, it's great that now he wanted to explore all the the adventures, even though even though the boys and Webby had gotten into bigger trouble, as they should. So they knew they did something wrong. But hey, in, in the end, Scrooge definitely had a heart of gold, and it really shows uh, once they went to the journey of of Atlantis, just so they can get the lost jewel. It was perfect. Uh, David Tennant did a great job too, uh, providing the voice of Scrooge McDuck. Definitely shows um, how they actually do it, giving that particular Scottish accent right there. That's a lot different from Alan Young's uh, Scottish accent that he provided when he played a role. The adventures that they went to actually looks interesting. So they, uh, I, they even had all the other characters that. Flint Hart Glumgoat has uh, that were actually strong, but they were just there to explore. Well, Don Duck is just tricking them into actually going to the bathroom, but then he began to find out that <laughs> that Scrooge and the game were there, especially with that scene where they went into the trap, trap filled with lasers, and and one of them actually went in there and. And Scrooge was trying to show him how how to work smarter, not harder. I mean, he went to an easy way out by <laughs> by taking his cane and just swings uh, on the rope. <laughs> While uh, Donald was just trying to held on the shield, trying to cover all the flames that's happening. Yeah, because he's being burned. <laughs> it was funny. But other than that, though, I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, it so far so good. It's gonna get better as it follows, and I can't wait to see some more episodes 
once we get to it. I hope all these episodes will be available online so we get to see what happens next. So that way we can see the next journey of, of Scrooge McDuck and his game. The score for the new series is, is definitely orchestrated, um, most of which are not exactly as memorable as it was in the original. Like I always remember all these other themes that they use uh, during their adventures that they had. But although I did actually felt like one of the scores almost felt almost closer to it. Because I can hear it echoes uh, one of the themes here. But still it just needed more work. The theme song the for the new series, uh, which is a cover version of the 1987 series, just felt more generic, your typical Disney Channel pop star type, which is actually sung by a former American Idol contestant. And I don't even watch American Idol, so frankly I don't care. But I, I, I'd actually found out about it. It was actually sung by Felicia Barton. It just doesn't have the the heart and energy that the original theme song had, and that alone was kind of a shame. But, so that's why I prefer the original song a whole lot better than this one. So that that was my other nitpick I had. I also hope the nephews themselves will be a whole lot smarter than they were at the beginning. And I know they will pretty soon. I mean, even though they are basically trying to be... Yeah, even though they're just basically trying to be hip and cool. And dim-witted. So, hopefully that's the case. And Webby should definitely tone down her quirkiness. I know she's smart. I know she knows everything that's going around. So she's part of the background of, of the family. And I know she's hungry for a hamburger. I could definitely see it now. <laughs> but still. We need exactly the tone that the original series had. Yeah, I know I keep comparing the series. But I wanted to actually have a heart of gold. So that way the show will get even better and better. But hey, so far so good. Um, it's not a bad episode, actually. I, I really did enjoy it. I, I love all the the moments that it really had, and it, it was really fun. So they knew that they're going to get there. So I can't wait to see what happens next. They are going to premiere the the new episode on September 23rd of this year, and on top of that. <laughs> It's going to be two days uh, after its original airing of the series for its 30th anniversary. That's cool. So, it's a good thing. So I can't wait to see all the other episodes and hopefully they'll upload it online so I get a chance to watch it. So, here you go. So that's my reaction and review of the new DuckTales. And I just can't wait. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.